Hello there reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be looking at FLS slots. FLS you say, it's not faster than light speed and it's not the holy hot drive, it's fibre local storage slots and I'm not going to go into full details about the actual fibres themselves because if I start talking about fibres then we'll have to talk about threads and we're going to talk about context switches then we'll talk about cash flushes and you'll be fast asleep in this video will be a couple of hours long so I'm going to keep it quite high level and the main thing I want to talk about is how it manifests itself actually inside reason and how I hit on the, on, hit on the issue um, in the end I had to run quite a few back end processes to actually suss out what really was going on with my system because it really did confuse me. So. I just uh, load up this ozone here and you get an error. You get an error, this file cannot be found, um, as it, make sure it's installed and all the rest of it, you click OK. And I even went quite anal and I went through my file system and I made sure everything was the same, you know, the case sensitivity. I thought, oh, maybe it's something going along there. And obviously I've got the DLL, I can see it's actually fine. Oops, I should need that error up. There we go. You have to click through these a few times, and the other thing is you don't always get these errors uh, with every single VST. So I'm getting this fail to open file. Very confusing. So I go and grab another VST and drop it in, and then that one loads up. It's like, ah, oh, so my reason must be okay because I'm loading up VSTs. Um, if I actually go and grab, in fact, I grab this, I grab this compressor and drop this in, I'm now going to get another error, fail to open file. So as I say, this is really, really confusing. Of one minute one opens, the next minute it doesn't open. And uh, in fact, I've got this one other VST up here, which I'm going to now drop in, and this one is going to open up. Um, and I will talk about why this one does open up because it's actually the way the um, it's been dynamically linked to the runtime, where the others are actually statically linked. So I've got this um, FLS checker. It's a great little bit of program. You load it up. It will tell you how many available slots. And as you can see, I've got zero available. That means any new unique VST I try and load up into this. Um, project is not going to work and that word unique is actually quite important so and I'll get onto that a bit later as well so as I said this failed so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to just delete out this verb to here and then I'm going to go and grab that compressor again and in fact there you go first of all I've got one slot available so let's go and grab that compressor now and that should load up Whereas before, as you saw yourselves, it just all failed. And if I update this, you can see I've gone back down to uh, zero slots. As I say, so you, you can go around in circles when you're looking at this. It also, it also manifests itself in a different way as well. So I wanted to load up this uh, project I had. And I've been working on this project. I had to save it and reboot my PC, I think it had some updates, I thought yeah it's about time I did do a reboot, I hadn't done it for a few weeks and so then I obviously got that back up, opened up my project and I hit on this error, a VST plugin error, it's like hang on a second, this was just working a, a, a little while ago so what's going on here? And sure enough if you actually just scroll around inside this project um, I will find some errors. There we go. I've got an error there on that plugin. There might be more than one plane which has failed, and there's another plugin there which is gone. There might be some more, and it, and it varies, you know, <laughs> um, of, of what's really going on. And I say, without knowing, it's just so confusing. And so if we stop here and have a look at this, we've got a Synth Master one. So I'm just going to close this reason down, and then I'm going to let's add that plugin in now. Here it is. And sure enough, it loads up, and it's, it's absolutely okay. As I, so I said, this is very, very confusing. So let's have a deeper look at what's going on. So let's talk about fibre slots in more detail. Uh, this is a Windows issue, and within Windows, you have uh, 128 available fibre slots, um, of which Reason has already used up 48 slots, so it means there's only 80 available for you to use. And as you can see here on my... Uh, fiber checker, I've actually got 79. The reason I've got 79 is obviously the checker itself is using up a slot. Um, and different VSTs will use up different amount of slots. 
Um, I believe around about 2015, uh, yeah, Microsoft released a new runtime version. So pre-2015, it's fair to say uh, VSTs take a minimum of one slot, whereas uh, after 2015, they can take a minimum of two slots. As I said, though, we've got, I know we're going to look at some instruments which will take up many more. Um, in the case of uh, Benedict's uh, Space Synth here, if I actually just load that up and I do an update, you can see this takes up zero slots at all. This is because this particular VST is what's known as dynamically linked to the runtime, whereas other VSTs are statically linked to the runtime. And more and more manufacturers um, are moving over to the dynamic link, mainly because of Windows 10, they've actually incorporated all the runtimes. And you might think, why do we go for a static link? It's because the manufacturers themselves can make a package, give you the package, you're going to install it, and it's actually going to work on your system. With a dynamic link, you end up, you could get the DLL, you can put it on your system, and it might not work because you don't have the runtimes, and you're going to think, oh, what a crap company, whereas really it's your system which isn't quite configured correctly. So that's why most people obviously went down that static route. So let me just get rid of that a second. Now, one of the, uh, let's put that on top, as I said, also, uh, the order in which you load up VSTs can affect the number of slots used. This isn't always the case. It's, it's usually down to manufacturers. And, and in the case of uh, Arturas, um, you're going to see some very, very bizarre results in, indeed. Um, another quick thing I'm going to mention now before I forget is, if you loaded up many different VSTs and you deleted them all, it doesn't always free up the slots. Most of the time it does, but every now and then it doesn't free up the slots. It's not the end of the world. You can obviously save your project, restart reason, and if, if then slots should have been made available, they will be made available. You know, so just bear that one in mind as well. In a lot of cases, you could say, well, 80 slots, uh, and if, if, say, every VST used up um, two slots, well, that means you could have 39 unique VSTs, and you've got to remember, we are talking about uniqueness, so that's quite a key. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna load up this DX7, and if we click on update, you can see it's taken up six slots. So I'm just going to click on update again, so it just goes back to zero. And then I'm going to take this module V and load this up and click on update again. You can see that's taken up four slots. Um, what I'm going to do now, actually, is this time I'm going to load up the module V. Actually, I should have actually done a, an update there so you can see that clearly. So let me just delete that off. And there we go, we're back to 79. So let me just then load up this module V click on update, we've taken up six slots. And this time, the DX7, which took up six, six slots before, has only taken up four. So as I say, some VSTs, depend on the order of how you load them up, um, it depends on how many slots you use up. Now, this is a biggie, Analog Lab 3. Um, in fact, before I load up again, let's just reset this. There we go, we've got a 79. Let's load up this one. Are you ready for this one? 45 slots. 45 slots, that's taken up half the amount. And we haven't ended there either. So I'm just going to open this up. I'm just going to make sure I click on here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly just go through a few of the patches. I'm not even playing the patches, I'm just going through a few of the patches. There we go, I think I've gone through a few enough. I'm going to just close that down, click on update. And we've taken up another 10 slots. That's like 55 slots for this one package. So if I now actually remove that, that VST and click on update, you can see it hasn't freed all the slots. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, so when you add and remove VSTs, it doesn't always free the slots. Um, in the description, I'll put down where you can actually go and download this uh, fiber checker because it is obviously a, a free download. And uh, kudos to the guy who actually wrote this because uh, I, I am finding this quite handy. Um, since I found out really about Analog Lab 3, because I was actually sort of, I say I was sort of using it, <laughs> I've actually thrown it out and I'm quite happy because I do my own patches. I, I just use it a bit like a combinator. Um, but I've now just gone back down to their raw uh, VSTs themselves. So rather than using that to actually pull up stuff. 
um, so I don't actually hit on that issue. But I thought I'd share this with you, as I say, because it hit me, especially when you're, you're getting things like, you know, why isn't this file open, the file not found, and you know the file exists. You just end up pulling teeth for trying to work out what's going on. And I'll say, in my case, I happen to have a brand new VST, and I honestly thought it was that VST which was causing all the corruptions within my file, um, which was a shame because it was a nice little compressor. More importantly, I had it dialed in nicely to what I was doing, and I actually threw it out and put a rack extension in its place. Okay, I dialed that in. But, uh, yeah, it just really did catch me out. So, I hope you found that useful. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, bye for now.